So this is a bit different than my usual setup, and that's because I was contacted by Fifine asking if I'd like to review their latest USB microphone, the A8 gaming microphone, which you are listening to right now. As I've tested and reviewed quite a few microphones before, and of course use mics in all of my videos, I was curious to see what that gaming mic was like, so I accepted and they sent me one. Before starting the review, I need to mention that although I received the microphone for free, this did not impact my review, which remains impartial and unbiased. In the box, you get the user manual, you get the microphone itself, which comes mounted on a nice desk stand that has an integrated shock mount, and by the way, this is how I normally use the microphone, but just because I do not have a desk in front of me over here at this angle, which I shoot from, I opted to mount the microphone on a boom arm instead. There's also a nice metal pop filter. And you also get a pivot mount, which is what I use to mount the microphone on the boom arm. You also get a two meter or six and a half foot USB-C to USB-A cable. Attaching the pop filter is easy. You just pop it into place, on the top, there's a touch sensitive mute button that turns red when the microphone is muted. The angle on the desk stand is adjustable. The stand is weighted and does a good job holding the microphone in place, even at weird and high angles like this one without the microphone toppling over. The integrated shock mount does a good job as well. On the back, there's a button to toggle between the different RGB colors, which range from still single colors to rotating colors like I have set right now to rotating gradients. You can also turn off the lights completely if you wish to do so. And then on the bottom of the mic, you get the USB-C port and a 3.5 millimeter port for real-time monitoring. So this entire review is of course all recorded on the A8 connected to my MacBook, so you can hear what the microphone sounds like. This is the raw audio without any tweaks, and I'm about four inches or about 10 centimeters from the microphone, and the gain is set at about 60%. The A8 is of course a plug and play USB microphone, Phone, which means you simply plug it in and it's ready to go. Now to test some plosives to see how effective the pop filter is. Let's start with the pop filter on. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked. And now let's remove the pop filter. Oops. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked. As you can see, the pop filter actually does a good job at removing the plosives. Let's pop it back in place. Now I'm going to play back a few recorded segments at different gain levels and distances from the microphone. So this is what the microphone sounds at about 4 inches or about 10 centimeters. The gain is set at about 50% on the microphone and is also set at 50% on the MacBook. I'm peaking at about minus 15 decibels. And this is the sound of silence. Keep in mind, I'm not in a soundproof or isolated room, so there is a little bit of ambient noise from the room itself. And now I move to around 30 centimeters, or about a foot away from the microphone. The gain is still set at 50% on the microphone and 50% on the MacBook. Now let's turn up the gain to about 75% on the microphone. So this is what a gain of about 75% sounds when I'm about four inches or 10 centimeters away. As you can see, I'm peaking at about minus 12 decibels. This is now the sound of silence. And now I moved back to about 30 centimeters or about a foot and the gain is again at 75% on the microphone and about 50% on the MacBook, and now I am peaking at about minus 12 decibels. So now I'm repeating the same tests, only now I increase the gain on the MacBook to 75%, and again, we're starting with 50% gain on the Fafine microphone, and as you can see, I'm peaking at about minus 15 to minus 12 decibels. I am still about 10 centimeters or four inches away from the microphone, and this is now the sound of silence. And now I moved back to about a foot or about 30 centimeters from the microphone. The gain on the microphone itself is about 50% and on the MacBook is set at about 75%. 
Now I'll increase the gain on the microphone itself to about 75%. And again, I'm back to being about four inches or 10 centimeters with the gain on the microphone and the MacBook at 75%. I'm peaking at about minus nine decibels. This is now the sound of silence. And now I'm back to being about one foot away or 30 centimeters with the gain on the microphone and the MacBook at 75%. So here are my thoughts on the microphone. I'm going to start with what I don't particularly like. Really my main issue with this microphone, well, I'm not sure I can call it an issue, more of an annoyance and something I'd wish they'd done better, is simply placement. While I love that you get a dial for gain control, I'm not a big fan of it being in the back. I would have rather this was on the front instead, or even below, as their previous generation microphone was. That would have made not only controlling it, but also checking what level it's currently at much easier. You'd be able to simply glance at it rather than having to pick the microphone, turn it around and try to see what gain level it is at. I also love that this uses USB-C rather than micro USB or even worse, a proprietary port. But again, I would have rather the port be on the back rather on the bottom. That would have made cable management much better with the cable running from the back of the microphone to your computer. Their older generation microphone also had its port on the back, so I'm not sure what happened there. But both these things are quite, quite minor when you consider what I actually like about the microphone. And there's a lot to like. As I said, I like the fact that there is a dial for the gain, enabling you to adjust the gain on the fly. I like the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for live monitoring, though I found the level is quite low, so unless you have the gain on a high level, you might not hear yourself quite loudly. I really like the desktop stand that it comes with and love the fact that it is weighted so the microphone does not topple over, even at weird angles. The material it's made of is generally solid and nice to the touch, with the exception of the hinge over here, which feels a bit like cheap plastic. I love that there's a mute button that lights up red to know that you're on mute. The touch surface works quite well, and I like that the entire area is touch sensitive, not just the small area around the microphone icon. The RGB lights are cool, not my thing personally, but I'm sure for others they might be. I do love the fact that you can turn them off completely in case you don't want any lights. But most importantly, I love how this microphone sounds. To be honest, before testing this, I was thinking that at best, I'd appreciate the sound quality for its price. That is, that the sound quality would be good enough for a $50 USB microphone but I was actually very pleasantly surprised that I think I can say I love the sound quality, period. Now, I'm not an audiophile or an audio engineer, but to my ears and probably to the average person's ears as well, this actually sounds great. And just to give you an idea, I just briefly switched to the Rode VideoMic NTG, which is an absolutely fabulous and versatile microphone and the one I actually use for all my videos but the road is around five times more expensive. Granted, we are comparing apples and oranges here, yes, and it is in no way a fair comparison, aside from the fact that the road is in a completely different price range, the road is a completely different kind of beast as well. It's a shotgun mic for starters with a built-in battery. It's auto sensing can be used on a camera or as a USB microphone or on a mobile device, has filters, safety channels, etc. Yes, I am well aware. But bear with me for a second. If you were just comparing how the microphone sounds plugged into a computer's USB port versus the Rode plugged into a USB port, just for comparison, does the Rode sound five times better than the A8? To my ears, it absolutely does not. So that's it for now. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the A8 microphone. And as always, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing such content. Until next time, cheers.